All right, welcome to the next video in the series on Chrome DevTools. So in this series, what I'm trying to do is trying to make you a better developer by making you aware of the tools that are available to you that will help you be more effective as a web developer. So in this particular video, what we're going to be talking about are the element panel and the styles panel that goes along with that. So how we can look at CSS and figure out what is and isn't working in our web pages. So I have this basic web page here, just uh, pretty straightforward content, a little bit of CSS, not a whole bunch, but enough that we can play around with different styles to understand what's going on. So if you want a copy of that code, if you look down in the description, you'll see a link to the code gist that has that. So let's jump into our web page here. Here it is rendered in the browser. And what I want to do is I want to bring up the elements tab in the Chrome DevTools. Now I can right click and go to inspect as always to bring up the DevTools, but getting used to the keyboard shortcuts will save you a little bit of time. So on Mac, command option C, C for CSS, control shift C on Windows, that'll bring it up. So I'm gonna open up mine, there we go. And I'm gonna turn off device mode here just to leave it as the regular web page. On the elements tab, we can mouse over any element. So if I open this up to see a little bit more, you can see as I move around over here, selecting individual elements is going to give me information about them. So right now I've got my mouse on the H2 element and over in the actual display of the web page, we can see that the H2 is highlighted with a blue background. The little tooltip is giving me 830 pixels by 192 pixels. So it's giving me the calculated size of this rendered in the browser right now. Now it's only the blue background, which means this is only the content box for what we're looking at. If I go over the paragraph here, we can see I've got some brown and some blue. The blue is the content box. The brown is actually the margin being applied to the top and bottom of the paragraph. If we go to the header, we can see there's blue and green. Green is padding. So green is padding. The brown is the margin. And then there's a tan color as well. If you have a border, it will show up as tan. Now, if you want to remember those colors, figure out what is what. Down in the bottom here, we have the styles panel selected. Right here, if I open up the side panel, this is the computed styles side panel that we're opening up. And it shows us all these colors. So brown for margin, border, padding, and blue for the content box. So whatever element you have selected here is going to be selected in the styles panel down below. And if this is open, it's going to give you all, all the box model dimensions for that particular element that you have selected. So right now, if I click on here, because the panel is open, because I clicked on this, it's going to actually select it for me. It's a great shortcut. And we can see that I have a margin of 30 pixels on the top and bottom of this paragraph. There is no border. There is no padding. And this is the inner dimensions of the content box. At the bottom of the elements panel here, we have a breadcrumb menu, which gives us the cascade effectively. It's telling me, okay, this is the par the element that you have selected right now. Its parent is main, its parent is body, its parent is HTML. So, okay, great. Yeah, I can see that from my HTML here because it's a simple page. On larger pages, this becomes a lot more useful, a lot more helpful because it shows me that, well, this class, lorem, is going to be a style that's applied and then anything that has p or p.lorem is going to be applied the main style is going to be there. So the cascade of CSS properties, depending on where you have them set, these are all the things that could be impacting the styles for our current element. And if there were class names or IDs on any of these, those would show up in the breadcrumb menu as well. All right, now the difference between, I'm going to open this a little bit more. The difference between styles and computed is this is actually not just what was in the CSS, but after the page is rendered, these are the actual dimensions, the actual properties. So if there's things that are being changed, depending on whether or not there is a particular media query being applied or other things going on on the page, uh, JavaScript that has changed values for certain things, this is the computed values for it. So styles, this is your actual CSS, but it's not just your CSS file. 
If we look down inside of here, we can see main.css, main.css, main.css. Nothing unexpected there. But then the next one right here, user agent style sheet. So what is that one? That is actually what the browser is putting on first. So every browser has their own user agent style sheet. So Safari has one, Chrome has one, Firefox has one. These are the default styles that are being applied to your page before your CSS ever does anything. So if I don't have a CSS file, these user agent styles are controlling how the page looks. So the default values that your CSS has, this is where they're coming from. Now, I did another video on the CSS initial property, the revert and the unset values that you could use for property values. Uh, you can see right there the link to that up at the top. So if you want to learn more about that, please have a look at that video. For right now, just understanding that we have this cascade. So the user agent styles being applied to all paragraphs. And then in my style sheet, I have the universal selector. So it's applying all of these things. And there is a slash through this. We've got a strike through for this property name and property value. Just like right here, we have a couple of strike throughs. Those strike throughs mean that that value is actually not being used. So why is this not being used? Why is this not being used? It's because there is a value later on. So this margin block start and end is being overwritten by the value that I have in my own CSS file for the same element for paragraphs. So this one is overriding these. And font size, well, I've got one here on the class, which is overriding the one in the paragraph. And then that is overriding the universal selector. So there's two font sizes being with a strike through. Now, two other elements right here are two other styles that I have with the strike through, but they also have this little warning triangle in front of them. That means that there's something invalid about it. It could be the property name. It could be the property value. And I did a couple of examples here that are pretty obvious if you look at the CSS. But if I put my mouse over the warning triangle, it'll tell me this one has an invalid property value. So ice cream apparently is not a valid value for the display property. And on the one above that, dill pickle is an unknown property name. So you can't use that in your CSS. So look for those for as a, a warning for things that you have probably mistyped or misunderstood as you are writing your CSS. So this, this is a source of error in your file. The strike through doesn't mean it was a mistake. It just means that you have something that is being overwritten. So those problems where the specificity for the style being applied, you're not quite sure what style you wrote that is actually being used. This is a way to track it down. So right here, that is being overwritten. Here's the actual value font size. This one is the one that's being used. All right, now there was another one that I wanted to look at in here. If I select this code element, in my own CSS file, I added some CSS for the code element, but it is grayed out here. It doesn't have a strike through, but it's grayed out. And that means not that I've done anything wrong, not that the property is being overwritten, it's that this is a property that doesn't apply based on the current circumstances. So why does this not apply? Width, that's a pretty valid property. 800 pixels, that makes sense as well. But code elements, code elements are display inline. That is the default value, display inline. Every HTML element at its very core, at the very beginning, is they're all set to display inline, and then they get overwritten to turn into block elements and inline block and so on. So this, as an inline element, is not allowed to use the width property. So I haven't mistyped anything, but I can tell by looking at this that it's grayed out. This is something I could remove from my own CSS file. So this is a way for me to remove things. And right down here in the computed styles panel, we can see display inline right there. That is what the value is for the code element. Down here, down here. I don't see anything in here anywhere. Uh, user agent style, the only thing that's in there, font family monospace. So even the browser is not doing anything to change the code element. This is a default. All elements start as display inline and then get changed. 
as needed. But if something is inline, it means you cannot set a margin on the top and bottom. You cannot set a width on it. And there's a little information bubble right there. You can put your mouse over it to find out what the problem was. And it tells us, hey, this thing is display inline. Try setting display to something other than inline if you want to use that width or just get rid of the width property entirely. These checkboxes, we can do things like this. We can step through inside the styles panel. We can turn things on and off. So strike through, it's not being applied. I can tell now that this color wasn't being applied visually, but if you need to test things, if you want to figure out, okay, what have I done wrong here? Why is this not working? You can start stepping through here and turning things off without affecting your CSS file, but you can figure out, okay, now I know what the problem is by turning it off on here. Or if you want to add new properties, we can always do that as well. We can come in here and say, you know what, on every element, I'm going to set a default font size of 3rem. Look, it got crossed out because it's not being applied to the code element. It's not being applied to the paragraph, the H2. No, it's got its own font size. So you can change these things. And here, so my font size, I'll take that one off. I'm just going to click again. I want to add another property. Let's do something that will show up. Border one pixel solid orange. There we go. So every element in my web page now has a one pixel solid orange border on it. And we can see, yes, it is being applied everywhere. So you can add as many as you want. If you need to test things for various states, this is a toggle to open up this menu. You can choose. All right, so for my H2 element, if it's active, so it's being clicked on, or if it's being hovered over, I can apply something inside of here, another property, background color gold. There we go. So that's being applied. If you had styles that you created with these properties, this is how you can test things as well. Just to be clear here, the element style, this is that I'm applying a new style to the selected element, H2 here. The hover, I don't have any styles right now, so let's add one for that. We'll jump back into here and we will say on the H2 element, hover, we want to change the background color to blue violet, we'll say. So I'll save that. Here we go, background color, blue violet. There it is, it's showing up. And as I toggle this, you can see that style appears here. And element style, again, to be clear, you can see that it appeared up here in the CSS. So element style, this is for inline styles. So if I take this off, then as I toggle hover, that's being applied. That's the hover state being applied. It's like the, the user is interacting with it. Without me having to mouse over things, I can come in here and toggle the hover or focus or whatever state it is that you want for that particular element. Element style, as I add things here, it will be added as inline styles. So as an example, and then classes. Oh, okay, on my H2, in my CSS, back in here, if I had created a class name here, lorem, this is being applied. So lorem, if I wanted to add that to my H2 element, let's turn off the hover class and close that panel. When I click on here, I'm adding a class to this element. So I can say, yeah, the lorem class. There we go. I've added the lorem class to my H2 element. So now these properties are being applied to this element. So that's what we have going on here. And that purple, that's my hover being applied without me toggling it here. Now, if we click on here, new style rule, so I'll do that. You can see it created this one right here, the inspector style sheet. So this is not in my CSS file. It's not the user agent, but this is for the inspector that we're working with right here. I have the ability now in here to create a new style. So I click just after the curly brace here. 
and we can create as many of these as we want. But inside of here, I'm going to add a font size to for REM. There we go. So that has been applied to this. It hasn't put it as an inline style, but it's in the inspector style sheet, which means it's equivalent to if it were in our CSS file. So that's what this one, this add new style rule, it's a style rule as if it were in the CSS file. The dot class is add a class to this element. Same thing as if I clicked up here and I double clicked on the class and I wrote something else. Now that class, if it existed, would be applied to this element. I can manually type styles in here or doing it down in here just lets you see all the style properties at the same time. All right, so there we have it. Lots and lots of things that you can try and experiment with in your styles panel and in your elements panel to test your CSS and figure out if you're doing things correctly. So I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks for watching.